Today I'm going to be doing a fashion shoot with the light coming in through a garage door. What I really want to show you is just how versatile this light can be. Everybody, Lindsay Adler here and you'll notice that most of my fashion shoots are in a studio and I'm using a lot of studio strobes but I don't need that to create beautiful photographs I love the control of the studio but I can create quite a lot of control out of natural light in fact using just the light coming in from a garage door and that's what I'm going to show you today now a lot of photographers like this technique they like using garage door light not just because it's beautiful quality of light but if you know what you're doing you can create a lot of sculpting and a lot of control. And that's what I'm going to be sharing with you. Now, as a photographer, specifically focusing on fashion and creating model portfolio images, these sorts of setups are fantastic for creating model portfolio shoots and agency comp cards. So a lot of times models need something that is clean and simple where they're connecting with camera. And this setup is going to be perfect for that. So I want all of the fashion photographers out there to keep that in mind. This is one of my go-tos. Now, if you're not shooting in a garage, you can create a similar setup with window light. Now, I've been talking a lot about control. And so today I'm going to cover four main variables, four main things that I can change to this setup to change the look of the shot. So first of all, I'm going to show you how we can change the distance of the subject to the front of the garage door to change the shape of the light, the directionality of the light. Then I wanna show you how we can change the distance of the background to make it appear lighter or darker. Then I'm going to change my angle, moving around the subject, which will change the way the light looks and sculpts on the face. And then finally, I'm going to show you how adding in negative fill or reflector can also change the look of this image. Then you combine all of those things together and you have endless combinations. So with that, let's take a look at the light coming in from a garage door and how you can use that to create beautiful fashion images. All right, so first of all, keeping in mind that I wanna create images that are going to be suited for a comp card, basically the images representing the model, uh, we wanted to have simple hair and makeup and styling that had a little bit of a fashion look but didn't overpower the subject. So you can see the choices we've made here. And then we've also taken a hand-painted canvas background to create something simple, something clean that wouldn't distract from our subject. Now I'm also thinking that these images I'll likely shoot in black and white to make it feel a little bit more timeless, again, to focus on the beauty of the model. But of course, because I shoot raw, I can always go back later on and try different color grading and, and try to see the different approaches I can get from post-processing this single shot. So let's begin with our first variable, which is the subject's distance from the front of the garage. Now we're gonna begin with her kind of in the middle and use this as our starting point and then see how the changes in distance affect the light on the face. All right, so let's start here. So for this first shot, the subject is about six or so feet from the front of the garage. And so what that means is there's still quite a bit of light hitting her, but we have a situation called covered shade. So what that means is that there's something above the subject's head which blocks overhead light, which means the light is going to be primarily from in front of her, which means it's really flat. It'll create really big catch lights in the eyes. But let's see what would change if, for example, we move her to the very front of the garage. Because what'll happen is as she moves forward, she gets a little bit more directionality of the light from above. And so it's not really covered shade in front of her. What that'll do is it'll create more shadows underneath the cheekbones and the jaw lines, a little bit more sculpting to the face. So, will you do me a favor? And can you move to the front? And Eric, will you help me with that background? Okay, so let me take a quick test. Beautiful. You will see in this image, there's a lot more directionality to the light on the, her face. There's a lot more top-down light because again, the, the open sky above her head. Today is a cloudy day, and so it's soft, not as direct, of course, as we would have on a sunny day. The other thing you'll notice is there's more contrast, and there's also a little bit more directionality, not just top-down, but from the side. And it's not sunny out, but the sun is somewhere behind the clouds over here, which creates a little bit more sculpting on her face. And you can see the shadows on the left-hand side of the frame here. And so the light was flatter before and it didn't have as much sculpting, but now there's a little bit more contrast. So let's go to the other extreme and I'm going to place her far back in the garage. Now, what do you think this will do? 
what this is going to do is it's going to flatten out the light to an extreme so there isn't really any sculpting and there isn't really any direction of light because as we move her back it's completely covered ab above her head and the light gets lower and flatter and smaller and so it is just going to be flat onto her which will create really flat flattering and big catch lights so let's move you back and let's make it under this All right, so you can see just how flat this light is. And if you pay attention, it's actually even a tiny bit bottom lit, like just a little bit more light coming in from the bottom. And the reason that is, is the light's blocked off from overhead, but a little bit of that open sky is actually bouncing off of the garage door floor and filling in underneath her chin. So it's a built-in reflector in this space. So the light is really flat, really coming in from the front, maybe even a little bit of bounce from below. And I like this just as much as the prior shot. They're just different. And so that's the whole point. It's all about control. Now in these shots, I have been adjusting my exposure. I'm using my camera's electronic viewfinder and exposure simulation. So I can actually see the exposure as the subject moves. Of course, when she's much closer to the front of the garage, it's much brighter light on her face. And as she moves back, I need to compensate. I've been keeping my aperture very wide, about 2.0, 2.2, and I've been adjusting my shutter speed. One of the other things you do want to notice is that we've been keeping the background approximately the same distance from the subject as I've been moving her around because that is actually our next variable that I'm going to show you how you can use that distance to control the look of the shot. All right, so let's talk about the distance of the background to the subject. Now, uh, we've started with the background several feet away. I'm gonna take a test shot to start there and then we'll build, take a look at this variable. Okay, so let me have those elbows out just a little bit again. So we have that beautiful textured gray background, but let's say in the shot that I wanted the background appearing a little lighter. Maybe I thought that towards the top of the frame it was a little too dark. What could I do without bringing in artificial light to brighten it? What I can do is I can bring that background closer to the subject. Now here's why. The inverse square law. Now don't worry, you don't have to be afraid of this, but basically the further away things are, the further the background is from the subject, the more the light will fall off, the darker it will be. The closer it is to the subject, the more similarly lit it will be. So more light will hit it. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take the exact same frame, but we're gonna move the background closer and closer to her is going to make it appear brighter. Okay, so you can see that the background has gotten lighter and that's because there's a similar amount of light hitting the subject as the background. They're similarly lit. But let's say that I wanted the background to go darker. Well, you can back the background up as far as you can in your space. The further back it goes, the darker it will be. This again is the inverse square law. Light falls off over time. Now, of course, you do have to pay attention, especially if you're using a small background like this. Eventually, it'll be so far away that uh, the relative distance will actually make it appear smaller behind the subject and she might not fit on the frame. We're going to do that in this shot, but I actually think it makes uh, for an interesting frame. I'll see a little bit of the floor, maybe a little bit of the top of the background, but because I'm shooting at 2.0 and these things are so far in the background, it'll be out of focus, soft, and just more like little textures, little vignettes. So, will you help me move that background? Great. The background now has gotten much darker. And as I mentioned, you can see the bottom of the frame, but I actually think it makes the shot look interesting. Okay, now, um, distance of the background, you can vary, but you can also vary the angle of the background. Uh, I don't need to demonstrate this, but think of this exact same concept. If you bring the background really close to the subject and then you change the angle so that part of the background is further away, well, the part that's further away will appear darker. And so you can use that to create a gradient of light across your background. So that is yet another variable when it comes to controlling the tonalities of your background. All right, so next up, I've been moving my subject and I've been moving the background, but how about moving myself? So I'm going to reset, bring the background a little bit closer, and then I'm going to move around and show you how that affects the light on the subject's face. All right, so all of these shots, I've basically been taking straight onto the model, nice front and center. And because the light source is this entire opening of the garage, it is one big flat light source. 
But now what I can do is I can change my angle so that the light source is now coming in from the side of the subject. So for example, if I move around here and my subject turns her face towards me, well now the light source is over here. It's off to the right hand side of the frame, which means she faces me. There's more shadows on the left hand side of the frame. And so light that was just a moment ago, completely flat, all of a sudden I can make it much more dramatic and much more sculptural. So let's take that same frame. Let's actually commit to it and make it really uh, polished and dramatic. All right, so we've taken a moment to move the background around behind her because as I moved around to see the sculpting of the light, I thought there were some distractions in the background. I want it to be consistent. I want it to be clean. So let's take a shot right now. And I can see by studying the light on her face that there's this beautiful, almost dual quality of light. There's big soft light coming in from the garage door. And then the bright hot spot of where the sun is even further off to the right of the frame here is creating even another pretty highlight. So let's see how this is looking. Pretty and then chin towards me. Nice. So now we're creating something that is really dramatic and really sculptural. But just so you know, I could push this even further and I can move even further off to the side of the frame so that I'm getting just like little kisses of rim light on my subject. So I'm going to make one more change with the background to see, to show you just how dramatic this could be. Now in studio lighting, we call this short light. Basically what that means is the shadow sides of the subject's face is falling towards camera. The highlights are away from camera. And so guess what? The concepts of studio lighting absolutely apply to natural lighting. You just have to know what you can change in your space and with your own position in order to get the similar effects. So would you help me move that background a little? Can you see what I mean about that almost dual quality of light? There's a beautiful highlight hitting the side of her forehead and oh, like a little bit of Rembrandt light uh, just beneath her eye. But then there's another fill and that's coming from light bouncing around just a little bit in the garage and even on the floor here. But we've made this so clean and so dramatic and fundamentally it's by me changing my angle. Now we did go through the effort of moving the background, but you don't have to, especially since I was shooting at 2.0, you can blur out the background and just make it soft and out of focus. And so if you're doing this by yourself, you don't constantly have to move the background in order to see different sculpting of the light. All right, so, so far we've covered three of our variables, the distance of the subject to the front of the garage. We've changed the distance of the background to the subject. I've moved my position around the subject. And then lastly, we're going to talk about reflectors and negative fill. This is going to allow you to bounce light or take away light, which allows you to have even more control over the sculpting that you create. So first, what you can do is figure out what position of the light and the subject did you like best? So did you like the subject closer? Did you like them further away? And then could you control and modify this even more by adding or taking away light with reflectors or negative fill? So I think we should maybe um, flatten it out into the middle and see what we can sculpt from there. All right, so we're talking now about reflectors and negative fill. Reflectors allow you to bounce light, negative fill allows you to take away light. Now, when you're shooting in a garage, you have uh, some negative fill from above, basically you're blocking off light, but usually you have a little bit of negative fill already built in from the sides. And it's basically by the fact that there's not much light bouncing or spilling from either side of the subject, but you wanna pay attention to your space. So if it's a bright sunny day, the light is bouncing off the floor, well, you are already going to have a little bit of reflection. Or maybe that light is coming in and it's hitting the side of the garage wall. Well, that is going to fill in the side of the face. And so you do actually have to pay attention to the angle of light, where it's bouncing, how it's moving around the space, and then decide, do you need to add reflection or do you need to take away some of that light? So to start off with, I'm gonna start without uh, any reflectors or negative fill, and then we're gonna add some of this in. So I'm gonna begin as is. Beautiful. So looking at my subject, you can see there already is a little bit of negative fill, a little bit of sculpting on her cheekbones and jawline. And that's one of the things I love about her. I love that sculpting, that shape that she has, but I think I wanna emphasize it even more. I am getting a little bit of bounce light in this space. And so we're going to introduce V-flats. Uh, in particular, we're going to use the V-flat world V-flats because they're portable and they're smaller. Uh, if I were using full size V-flats, they might barely or not quite fit in this space. These ones can break down and they are a little bit shorter. So we're gonna put black V-flats. Okay. All right, so adding the V-flats actually did two things. They prevented the light bouncing around the space. You can see that the jawline becomes a little darker, but it also blocks light from the background. So the scene overall becomes a little bit lower key. 
And so you just have to decide, is this the effect you're going for? Now, I could also come in here and then change the angle of the V-flat, maybe close it a little bit, change the angle so that some of the light from the garage still spills across the background. Or I could change the angle of the background so there's a little bit more of a gradient. Remember, these are all variables. So I like what this looks like, but you know what? I, I think maybe I wanna go the opposite direction. And instead I wanna add fill. I wanna have a little bit of reflection. Now I could use a silver white bounce reflector. I could use that and hold it underneath her chin, for example, that's one approach. But these V-flats are actually really versatile and I like to turn them around and turn them into a big white V-flat table. Basically, they catch a lot of light and bounce it back into the subject. So can you invert that for me? And I'm gonna take away this negative fill. Great. You can see that some of the overhead soft light here is bouncing off of the V-flat, filling in the light in her eyes, and it gives us a really beautiful flat light with just like a lot of glow to it. Now, as you can see, there are so many different variables at your disposal. And so as I'm looking at a shot, those are the things that I'm going through. Do I want the light to be more flat or more sculpted? Do I want the background to be lighter or darker? Do I want to create gradients in the shot? Do I want more sculpting on the side of her face or would I rather have more bounce? Or can I compare them and uh, try out a little bit of each and, and give the subject some variety? And that is what this video is all about. About creating variation, but with just one simple light, natural light coming in through a garage door. Now, if you're not shooting in a garage, you don't have a garage, you could create a similar quality of light maybe on the overhang of a porch, or even I've done it in New York City, uh, in the overhang of scaffolding, where you have that covered shade above your subject. But you could also do it from a large window in a living room. What's nice about a garage door light is that typically it's going to be a very large opening within direct light, which means it's going to be very soft and therefore very flattering on your subject. So keeping that all in mind, now my goal is to create some comp card shots for my subject. So I wanna create some that are maybe three quarters, some that are a little closer up, and it's all based on her beauty and ability to connect with camera. The lighting and the styling is secondary, but it really needs to showcase her. Now for these images, I'm going to be shooting with the Canon R5 and the Canon RF 50 millimeter 1.2. I'm going to be shooting at 2.0, so that even if the background is very close to her, it's going to have a beautiful fall off to the depth of field. I'm going to shoot 50 so I can get some wider shots and then pop in for a little bit closer so that I can really focus on my subject's beauty in a tighter frame. So with that, let's try out some of those variables. love the images that we got and I think they would be beautiful for a comp card. But I also think that they would be worthy of a fashion magazine. In fact, there are several photographers whose entire style is based on this quality of light. And the reason is because it's, it's beautiful and it's timeless. So if you're interested in making images like these and you wanna see the gear that I use to make these photographs, be sure to check out the links in the description below. And of course, visit adorama.com. Now, if you like these techniques and you wanna see how to do fashion photography, whether using a lot of gear or like this on a budget, be sure to like and subscribe. See you next time, guys.